part two is coming right up folks but first to the place that so many of you insisted that I come for breakfast it doesn't quite look open yet but I'll wait thank you so much it looks massive no no yeah yeah I, it was recommended that I come here so yeah thank you so much look forward to it see you later have a great day I've got my breakfast wrap now while I'm filming my little bit to camera, there's a little bit more serious filming going on down here. I'm not quite sure who the people are, but people are getting selfies with them and stuff like that. So they must be fairly famous. So here we are folks, the breakfast wrap. It's absolutely massive. And the girl was saying it's all from a local butcher. Look at that. There is no way I'm going to film myself eating this folks. It's going to be messy. Right, I couldn't even finish half of that wrap, but it was incredible. So if you're ever in Aberdeen, get yourself down to that wee white van. Can't remember what it's called, but I'll put a wee link in the description, okay? So here we are, welcome to part two of this Aberdeen coastal walk. Now I'm dressed exactly the same as I was in the first video, but the weather didn't get the memo. Now as I leave the harbour behind, the first thing we do is cross the Victoria Bridge and that takes us across the River Dee and over to the Torrey side of the city. Now there's quite a tragic story as to why this bridge is here at all. Back in the 1800s you would have done this crossing by ferry and in 1876 it was a ferry disaster. Now that was due to overcrowding, the fast currents on the river and also some pretty poor health and safety and it ended up costing 32 lives. So that's why we've got the Victoria Bridge. Can you see the lifeboats over behind me? I guess they do some testing and training there. How do you fancy going down that slide? By the way, thanks so much for all your well wishes over the last week or so. Sorry I've not been able to respond to them all personally. And you can probably hear I'm still not 100% right, but I just had to get out today. As I said in part one, there's really not that much to see around Aberdeen Harbour itself. But if we just cut along here, we'll soon be free of this industrial site and things should get a lot prettier. I passed a couple of these little mini lighthouses. I guess they must all line up just to guide the ships into port. Uh, it's certainly much more calm and nice over this side of the harbour. You can see the harbour entrance over there behind me and then this kind of air traffic control style building and that's Fitty across there on the other side, you'll remember that from part one and as I pan round you see the rest of the harbour and Aberdeen city centre beyond I'm cutting down to the beach now at Nig Point I'm not sure if I'll be able to get right round here if this is the coastal walk or if I need to go along the road up there we'll soon find out Tell you what, when you see these big trees that have floated in on the sea, you can really appreciate how damaging these must be to the small boats. I just wish that Alicia was here, she loves a bit of beachcombing. Over behind me here, you can see where I filmed part one of the video, starting way up at the River Don and then coming along the Esplanade. Esplanade, Esplanade, remind me? This is the Oyster Catcher's private harbour. As you can see, it's a gated community, very posh. Oh, the sun is doing its best to come out. I think we'll have those blue skies again pretty soon. I think you can continue along the beach, but I've come back up to the road because I wanted to see Torrey Battery. Now this is the place that would have defended the city through two world wars. And now it's just home to a very menacing seagull.
well there's not that much going on up here at the battery apart from the old outer walls of course but there is also some construction work and maybe they're developing something the lady seems to think this will be a cafe at some point in the near future but if nothing else come up here for the views it is spectacular And I can also see our next destination off there in the distance, Girdle Nest Lighthouse. So let's get down there, you know how I love a lighthouse. I'm being a wee bit quiet because there's some serious competition going on over here at Nig Bay Golf Club. It must get windy up here, that'd be a tough place to play golf. They're okay today though. So it's saying the road ahead is closed, I'm not sure if that's just for traffic or if it affects the coastal path as well, we'll soon find out but we'll find some way around, I'm sure. I know this is a car park, but it's really sad to see all this litter. 99% McDonald's as well. It's so disgusting. I know there's no litter bins in this car park, but just take your rubbish home with you. Who would just throw it on the ground in such a beautiful place? I really don't get it. So here we are coming up towards Girdle Nest Lighthouse, another Robert Stevenson design, one of so many in Scotland, but it's another lighthouse born of tragedy. When the ship Oscar wrecked on these rocks in 1813, it had a crew of 45, only two survived. It's just the strength of the sea, isn't it? Even on a very calm day like today, if you're on a boat, you don't want to be colliding with those rocks. Here we've got the Torrey Coo. Now this is the lighthouse's foghorn and it's named after the Turra Coo. If you haven't read about the Turriff Coo, get yourself online, it's an interesting read. Now they would switch this on when the visibility was less than five nautical miles and it could be heard for 20 miles out to sea and it sounded like a coo, hence the name. Now I had a wee check online and you can indeed hire these lighthouse cottages but they're almost 300 quid a night with a four night minimum. I'd be wanting to stay right at the top of the lighthouse for that kind of money. Oh no, my worst fears are realised. The road ahead is closed and I'll tell you why in a moment. We'll have to find another way around. Now what you see behind me here, this is the Aberdeen Harbour Extension Project. Now it's a £350 million extension to Aberdeen Harbour. Now this is the biggest marine infrastructure project in the UK at the moment. And when it's finished as well as the normal ships you would normally see in Aberdeen Harbour, it'll house cruise ships and renewable energy projects. It seems to have been going on for years, but it is scheduled to finish by October this year. We'll see. But in the meantime, that's us forced to backtrack a wee bit and try and find a detour around this harbour. Now I have to be a wee bit efficient with battery today, not like in the first part when it was all unexpected. This time I knew it was going to happen because my sidekick, who can't be here today I'm afraid, because she is in Poland and she's got most of my batteries with her in her bag and my other camera. So maybe we'll have another video from Poland pretty soon. Fingers crossed. Right, we've found a wee shortcut up round the corner of the golf course. As always, my adventures go a wee bit awry. I'm walking up between a fence and a golf course. Not even sure I'm allowed to do this, but I'm being respectful to the players. I'm stopping for the shots and stuff like that, so it should be okay. But if you are going to follow my route, just be aware of it. There's a ship, we can't be far from the sea. Now there's not that much exciting going on in this little stretch of road, but see over on the other side, you've got these mounds of grass and there's little vents everywhere, it's kind of like Teletubbies. Now I have heard that there's fuel tanks under there, storing vast quantities of fuel, I'm not sure if it's for military or commercial, but if anyone knows anything about it, be sure to let me know in the comments. In fact, if you look at this area from Google Maps, you can see the contours of the grass, quite interesting.
So that's good to see the path is now cutting away from another busy road and harbour. The second one we've had to pass today. But this should be us back on track and back down to the coast pretty soon. Now we're right back down at the edge of the North Sea and it reminds me exactly why I love this place so much. You've got agriculture that comes right to the edge of the coast. A coastline that just seems to go on forever and you've got all these little rocky inlets and they're just full of this stormy sea. It's beautiful. This is as close to the edge as I'm getting and I'm pretty sure it'd be impossible to get down to some of these little inlets. Even by boat, it's just so treacherous. I think I'm going to rename this coast the Unsung Coast because say compared to the west coast of Scotland it's so underappreciated and I've been guilty of neglect myself over the years but when you think about it this coastline with the North Sea it stretches for hundreds of miles it's rugged and beautiful inaccessible in parts you've got castles you've got harbours you've got beautiful towns you've got bird reserves it's just got absolutely everything and I'm never going to take it for granted again but as beautiful as it is, I really hope there's a bus to get back because I don't fancy retracing my steps. I'm not quite 100% yet and I'm feeling a wee bit tired. The great thing about this part of the trail is that you've got two paths. You've got the main path that runs pretty much plumb straight along the coast. But also because you've got so many inlets and outcrops, you can also take the smaller path that will hug the coastline. So it's just kind of mix and match, depending on how much time you've got, of course. Nah, I changed my mind. I've got loads of time. Boy, that is terrifying. I've got bad thoughts in my head. I'm guessing this was once a plinth or something for a big gun during the war, protecting that coastline. Right folks, I'm going to switch off for a wee while now to conserve some battery, but you can see what it's like already and with every single turn the coastline gets no less dramatic. So I'll see you in a bit. We can now see Cove off in the distance, it's almost there. Please have a bus for me, Cove. But anyway, look how high up Cove is. I didn't realise it went that high. So there's a massive elevation change because I know that it's got a harbour. So we'll go and explore a wee bit further.
So we're passing our first houses now and I can see the old harbour wall in front of me. This must be Cove. Yeah, there it is, there's the harbour. We've made it folks. That was really cool. If you've ever done the path from Stonehaven down to Denotter Castle, it's kind of similar to that, but it just gets more dramatic the nearer you get to Cove. So as we step out onto the finish line here at Cove Bay Harbour Wall, it's time for me to give the Aberdeen Coastal Trail a score. And I think I'll give it an eight out of 10. The second half especially is just so dramatic, but with the first half as well, that I did in part one, you've got so much diversity, there's so much to see. But then I'm dropping a couple of points just because you have those industrial areas that you have to go through, there's no way around that. So it's not purely a coastal trail, you're gonna to have to depart from that path for a couple of little sections. But that's, that doesn't matter. Eight out of 10 is still a really good score. And now I'm gonna to have to head right back up to the top of the hill because I guarantee you that the bus stop is right at the top to get back into Aberdeen. Thanks again so much for watching, folks. I'm off now before I lose my voice. See you later, bye-bye. <sighs> Aye, thanks for the sting in the tail, Cove. Oh boy, I hope there's a bus somewhere. Please.